Migraine is classically defined as a chronic neurological disorder featuring episodes of headache, often with associated symptoms. It is the most common cause of recurrent moderate to severe headache, with nearly 1 in 5 females and 1 in 20 males being affected each year. Prior to puberty, however, it is more common in males than females. It usually develops in early adulthood or during puberty and fluctuates then over the course of the adult years before typically improving after the age of 50. It tends to have a strong genetic component and commonly patients will have a family history of migraines. Migraine has a complex pathophysiology that is not entirely understood but is considered a neurovascular disorder whereby neurological events occur prior to and initiate the headache through interaction with meningeal vessels. It is believed to begin with a precipitating event, with a phenomenon called cortical spreading depression being key, especially in those with an aura. It is described as a slow spreading wave of depolarization in glial and neuronal cells. The auras, defined as temporary neurological disturbances, are thought to be the result of the neuronal excitation spreading through the cortex and correlates with the character and duration of the auras experienced. For example, vision changes or tingling. In those without aura, this precipitating event could be another trigger, such as altered brainstem activity or peripheral trigeminal activation. This then activates the trigeminovascular system, another key player, which is a term that describes the interplay between trigeminal nerve fibres, their innervation of the meningeal arteries, and the relays through the brainstem. Activation involves triggering nociceptors in the meninges, and these nerve terminals then release peptides such as substance P, bradykinin, and particularly of note, calcitonin gene-related peptide which, as we'll see later, is a therapeutic target. Release of these molecules promotes neurogenic inflammation and vasodilation of the meningeal arteries, which is linked to migraine pain, but also sensitizes peripheral receptors to such an extent that even non-painful stimuli like light can become painful. This links to the previous vascular theory where vasodilation was thought to be the main driver. However, it is now thought to be more linked to instability in these neurovascular mechanisms. These signals travel to the brainstem, including the spinal trigeminal nucleus, with trigeminovascular projections to the thalamus, and from there, parasympathetic outflow from the superior salivary nucleus, further perpetuating vasodilation, as well as projections from the thalamus to the cortex, which may then contribute to associated symptoms of migraine like photo and phonophobia. This process does take time, which is why we see the multiple stages in migraine. It can be divided into three or four distinct phases. First, preceding the headache, there is often a prodrome in which the person becomes aware that a migraine is beginning, and this can include mood changes, cravings for certain foods, yawning, and even cervicalgia, meaning neck pain. This typically lasts hours to days. Around 15 to 30% of cases then feature an aura. This can be a visual aura, often described as flashing lights, zigzags, or blind spots, and auras generally last up to around 60 minutes. Others can include tingling or numbness in the face or limbs, as well as potentially difficulty finding words or slurring of the speech. A rarer aura features temporary weakness and paralysis on one side of the body, termed a hemiplegic migraine. Another specific type of aura is migraine with brainstem aura, previously called basilar artery migraine, in which there is vertigo, ataxia, as well as other symptoms including altered levels of consciousness. It is worth noting that some people will primarily experience an aura and only minimal or no headache. The headache itself is typically unilateral, but does not have to be, and is most commonly described as a throbbing character, although again, not all are. 
They usually last approximately 4 to 72 hours that usually improve with sleep, and it is typically a moderate to severe headache that worsens with activity or movement. Common associated symptoms include nausea, photophobia, phonophobia, and osmophobia, meaning a sensitivity to smells, and so overall impacts the individual's ability to concentrate and function, with the classic example of wanting to lie down in a dark, quiet room during attacks. The final stage is the postdrome or recovery. Here, the headache resolves, but features such as poor concentration or fatigue may persist for several hours to days, giving a hungover type sensation. There is no specific test for migraine, and the diagnosis primarily focuses on ruling out dangerous underlying causes for headache, as well as correlating the history with suggestive features. SNOOP4 is a mnemonic that helps remember the features, suggesting a potentially more dangerous problem. S stands for systemic features, such as fever or weight loss. N for neurological symptoms or abnormal signs, such as reduced conscious level or altered mental status. The first O is for onset, with sudden or thunderclap, meaning reaching maximum intensity very rapidly, within a minute. Or headaches that progressively worsen over weeks are also included here. The second O is older age, with episodic headaches beginning after the age of 50, raising a red flag. The first P is pattern change, for those with chronic headaches. Second is papilledema. Third is precipitating factors such as valsalva or coughing. And fourth is positional aggravation, such as lying or bending or waking up at night, as these may represent a space-occupying lesion. No further imaging or testing is required for a diagnosis, however imaging such as MRI or in the acute setting CT scans are done with the presence of red flags, and lumbar puncture is done particularly in those with acute headaches with red flags, as 6% of subarachnoid hemorrhages are missed on CT. Migraines are not curable, however steps can be taken to control them. First steps include identification and elimination of triggers where possible, though caution needs to be taken to reduce the risk of a restricted life due to trigger avoidance. Examples include high caffeine intake, specific foods like chocolate, alcohol, weather changes, and even specific odours. Yoga has been found to improve headache frequency and intensity, thought to occur due to reduced sympathetic drive. Acute attacks are commonly treated with over-the-counter medication such as paracetamol or non-steroidals like ibuprofen, and if these are not effective, triptan medication. Generally, use at the onset of the headache is more effective. Triptans are selective serotonin 1b slash 1d agonists which block the release of neuropeptides that lead to migraine. Caution is needed, however, as using over-the-counter agents more than 14 days a month or over 10 days a month for triptans may predispose to medication overuse headache. Additionally, triptans trigger vasoconstriction through the 1B receptor and as such are avoided in those with uncontrolled hypertension or those with coronary artery disease. Lasmitidan is a new selective serotonin 1F receptor agonist which is also an option and due to its selective nature does not have cardiovascular contraindications. g pants, which are small molecule calcitonin gene-related peptide receptor antagonists, are used. Examples include ubrogepant and remogepant. Dihydroergotamine is an ergot derivative and another option that is usually used after failure of the above-mentioned agents. If nausea or vomiting are prominent, Antiemetics such as metoclopramide or promethazine can be used. Preventative treatment is explored in those with frequent attacks, typically two or more per week. These medications are titrated to maximum tolerated doses and maintained for at least eight weeks to fully assess the response. Examples include the tricyclic antidepressant amitriptyline, beta blockers such as propanolol, the angiotensin receptor blocker candesartan, and the anticonvulsant topiramate. 
However, this is teratogenic and generally avoided in females of childbearing age, as is candesartan. Gpans may also be used as a preventative agent, such as Remagipant, and there are monoclonal antibodies targeting calcitonin gene-related peptide as an injectable form, such as Irenumab. The CGRP antagonists are actually now recommended as the first-line preventative pharmacological therapy by the American Headache Society. There are some treatments that can impact brain activity through devices using magnetic fields or electrical currents, called neuromodulatory treatments, that can help with treatment and prevention of attacks. 